Let's say you're making some tabs for your user interface, but you want those tabs to be vertical. If you tried to do it with Godot's built-in tab container, you'd be out of luck because that feature doesn't exist, at least as of this writing. In this video, we'll explore how to make our own custom vertical tabs using buttons and panel containers. This setup will let you place the tabs wherever you like and can even make your horizontal tabs look better and be more flexible. So to get started, create a new scene. This is going to be a user interface, so click user interface. The original has this nice margin around the border, so let's create that. Back at our scene, press Ctrl A and add a margin container. Rename it to Panel Manager, set its layout to full rec. Finally, under Theme Overrides, add a 50 pixel margin around all the sides. Next, notice we have a column of buttons on the left and a panel on the right. We need an HBox container to split them up. Press Ctrl A and add a HBox container to the Panel Manager. Then under that, add a VBox container. This will eventually hold our column of buttons. Set a minimum width of 130 pixels. Under the VBox container, create four buttons. Rename them to Gameplay button, Graphics button, Audio button, and Controls button. Set the button text to Gameplay, Graphics, Audio, and Controls. Next, in the file system, create a new resource and look for something called Button Group. It'll ask for a name. I'm going to rename mine Settings Button Group. This will make all the buttons in this group act like radio buttons, which basically means only one can be toggled on at a time. Otherwise, you'd have multiple buttons with their toggle theme active. Now, select all the buttons and drag the button group resource into the button group slot. With them all still selected, set their toggle mode to on, and finally, set them to access as unique name. If you had them all selected, they should have all their toggle modes on and be accessible by their unique name as indicated by the percent sign next to their name. Now, let's go back to the HBox container and add a panel container. Rename it to Gameplay Panel. Under Layout, Container Sizing, set Horizontal to Expand. Now, let's duplicate the panel three times and then fill in their information so they're all unique. The section below each panel container is where you can customize the settings for your game by adding your own labels and buttons. I'll add a few elements to differentiate between the containers for now, but don't worry too much about what I'm doing. Once that's done, Set them all to access as unique name, similar to our buttons. Finally, disable all of them except for the one you want to show initially. That's it for the node setup. Now let's give it some functionality. On the panel manager node, create a panel manager script. Create a variable called panels of type array of panel containers. This will eventually hold a reference to all of our panels. We'll need a reference to all of our buttons as well, but they don't need to be in an array. Select all of the buttons and then hold Control and drag them over. Godot will automatically create on ready variables for the buttons. Next, create a ready function. Within the ready function, select all the panels and drag them over to assign them to the panels array. Don't hold Control this time, as we don't need them as on ready variables. Now, we need to create a function that will hide all the panels and display only the panel associated with the button that was pressed. We'll create this function now so that we can connect it to the button press signal later. Create a new function called show panel. It should have a parameter called panel to show and its type should be a panel container and the function will return void. Next, we'll iterate over each panel in the panels array and hide them using the dot hide method. Alternatively, we could set each panel's visibility to false using panel.visible equals false, but I think dot hide is more concise and readable. The only remaining task is to unhide the panel that was provided to the function. So type panel to show dot show. Let's wrap up by connecting our buttons. I'll demonstrate and explain the process for one, then you can move through the remaining connections on your own. First, connect the press signal of the gameplay button to the show panel function like this. Then use dot bind to pass a reference to the associated panel as an argument into the callable. Running the code now may cause a minor bug where more than one panel is initially visible until a button is clicked. While manually hiding all but one of our panels can fix this, you may have multiple panels open during development. To ensure only the default panel is initially visible, use the show panel function and specify the default panel to show. As a final step, we need to set the focus to the appropriate button for the visible panel. Since we're currently showing the gameplay panel, the gameplay button should be focused. To make this happen, enter gameplay button dot grab focus. Now run the project. When we click a button, it switches to the right panel. If your project doesn't run, 
you might have named something wrong or forgot to set XS's unique name. If the buttons seem to stick, make sure they all have the same button group. You should only have one button group resource. Do multiple panels show on startup? Make sure you're only displaying one at a time by manually hiding them or calling show panel in the ready function. And there you have it, a simple custom tab system for all your Godot projects. If you found this helpful, give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what game dev topics you'd like me to talk about next. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.